Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we reviewed all the films that I watched in 2023. And today is actually the very last day of 2023, so I'll probably get this up on the very first day of 2024, which is a little later than I expected, but it's still okay because this is going to be my listing of the most anticipated films in 2024. Now, a lot of these movies, some of them don't have many descriptions that are out there. Um, they also may not have um release dates uh films have just been pushed back a lot with the strikes and everything from this year hopefully next year nothing um detours these in fact i still don't see the one movie that i wanted to see this year uh on this list which is maxine i just hope it comes out in 2024 because i really want to see that movie uh one thing before we move on to just getting into most anticipated films of 2024. I did not realize Cocaine Bear came out in 2023. It had been so long since that film had come out that I st I thought it was like a 2022 at least film, but it was 2023. I would give it a B plus. I love that movie. It's fun. It's hilarious. And I learned that black bears can climb very fast up a tree if they want something <laughs> like, oh. and my favorite thing about that movie was there's kind of a misconception going around that either the mama bear or her cubs passed away. My favorite part of the movie was, spoiler alert, none of the bears passed away. They just get all addicted to cocaine, which is funny. And it was cheesy, but it was funny. And I really enjoyed that film. Okay, so moving on to the most anticipated films coming out in 2024. I don't have many. I'm sure there's a lot more. Last year, I actually, now with Cocaine Bear in the, in the running, um saw 21 films where most reviewers see like at least 80 to 100 films within a year so i'm really hoping i can see more i hope that even though i don't want to return back to work after this maternity leave that i can grind enough to make my car payments not have that be a stress is my new year's resolution not have my car be a stress and have enough extra to go see more films this year and not be uh, behind on films because I really want to be on time and to do uh, watch alongs on this channel. That's just my goals going forward into this new year. But let's go ahead and get into the first film. Okay, so the first film, I haven't actually seen the trailer for it. I just looked on IMB for the most anticipated films of 2024. It's coming out pretty soon, January 5th, and it is called Night Swim. Uh, the premise is forced into early retirement due to a uh, degenerative illness. Uh, former baseball player Ray Waller moves into a new house with his wife and children. He hopes that the backyard swimming pool will uh, be fun for his kids and provide physical therapy for himself. Um, however, a dark secret from the home's past soon unleashes a male malevolent force that drags his family into the depths of inescapable terror. So it's definitely on the horror spectrum. And I did see a short film a while back. Um, this doesn't sound like it's coming from that short film, but it's really interesting that this little kid was going into a swimming pool and on the outside is daytime. The pool water looked clear. He drops like a baseball or something into the water. When he dives in to go get the uh, the ball to retrieve it, underneath the water is dark, murky, and you can't see the bottom of the swimming pool. He comes back out and it the swimming pool, like it still looks like daytime, looks like nice clear water. So that premise is just creepy as heck. This is rated PG-13 and I'm excited to see it. I don't even think I'm gonna watch a trailer. I think I'm just gonna go in blindly and go see it at least the week of January 5th. But I'm excited to, that that's gonna be our start off for this year. The next film I'm really excited for, I actually saw a trailer for it when my sister and I went and saw the latest Hunger Games film. I thought it was really interesting. I think I heard a scoff from my sister, like typical, but again, in this day and age where all they do is just remake movies a lot and 
spinoffs and stuff like that. I like to see original ideas, even if they're not the greatest. And this is from the producers of Megan. So that's an original idea, an AI robot. And now with this one, it's called Imaginary and is set to release on March 8th. The premise is a woman returns to her childhood home to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and very unhappy that she has forgotten him. This may scare some people or worry some people, um, but I haven't been officially diagnosed with any of my <laughs> issues in life. However, there's just some things I know aren't normal. <laughs> normal people don't go through. And it's no longer called multiple personality disorder, it's called associative identity disorder, where you do have uh, multiple personalities uh, with living within you. It's literally different people's little lives like living inside you. And it's not like I'm the focal point and these people are just in my head and I have to be me all the time. It's more like, this vessel really just belongs to all of us. And I do have one that kind of is like an imaginary friend, like for a long time, that's just all I called him, but it's not like an imaginary friend where it's like, oh, you're sitting on him, like he's over there. It's not that kind of way. It's all in my head, literally. But, but he controlled a lot of my life, um, especially from the years of 2012 to 2016. So when I started to kind of becoming my own person and just being Amanda 24-7, yeah, this, that personality is not the happiest with me. I know it sounds made up and crazy and stupid, but I just relate to it in that sense that it's like, but I think like everything living with anyone, <laughs> there's going to be like boundaries pushed and people get upset, but you finally learn how to live cohesively and at least not to where like it's a push and shove of like one person lives here or none of us live here type of thing because that was a huge struggle for a while but now it's like everyone lives happily there but yeah that's why that's why this movie really intrigues me because I relate to it on such a level but this is a, a an actual imaginary friend that's like not in her body but like oh you're gonna sit on him or something like that and it's in the form of a little teddy bear and it looks so cute and I'm actually really excited to see this this movie so I hope it's good uh, again it is set to release on March 8th uh, the next movie to set and on the same date March 8th is Kung Fu Panda 4 and I'm gonna watch a couple of little kid movies. Um, I have a daughter now and although she's only gonna be three months on Tuesday, I may start taking her to some shows as well to start introducing her to theater experiences, um, but only take her to late showings and maybe a little bit later, not at the release date. So like Kung Fu Panda and stuff, I probably won't see them the release dates. A little bit later and at the last showing just so if my daughter does not do well in the theater um you know I'm not interrupting everybody and it's funny because I'm I didn't make a post I learned the hard way not to make a post about questions that you have about your kids but I looked up if anyone else did and oh my gosh the drama of should you take your baby is it okay to take your baby to theater uh, some people are like, yeah, sure, it's fine. Others are like, oh, no, you're like an evil parent. Whatever. That's why I don't make parenting stuff on here because I don't want to get judged. But I think at the late night showing, it shouldn't bother anyone. And if she gets too upset, I can leave. It's just a little kid show. I'm not too invested. But I have like the Kung Fu Panda uh, franchise. It's actually really fun. And I love Poe. And the little, um, I'll show you guys a picture of my dog. But a lot of people say he looks like him. I always thought he looked like Falcor from The Never Ending Story. But now a lot of people are saying he looks like the little uh, teacher from Kung Fu Panda. So I'm excited to see the fourth one and see what Poe has been up to. Okay, our next film is on set to release on May 3rd. And it is called The Fall Guy. I have seen a trailer of this again when my sister and I went and saw the newest Hunger Games movie. 
It looked pretty funny. It stars Ryan Reynolds and Emily Blunt. I love both of those actors. So, um, I don't know really the premise, even though I saw the trailer. I didn't write it down. I may, like, put a little screenshot of it here. But I know he is a stunt devil, and I think they're trying to find a missing actor. So, it just looks funny. It looks comical. And I have actually really loved to learn to love Ryan Gosling at first. I didn't really care for him too much. But he's actually really funny, and he's hilarious in SNL and it, as Ken in Barbie, even though I felt secondhand embarrassment for him the whole time. But, yeah, it's just one I'm not, like, completely like, woo I have to be there. But it looks funny. I look forward to laughing during it. So, The Fall Guy, uh, set to release. May 3rd. And then on May 17th, yeah, May 17th, we have The Strangers Chapter 1. I saw The Strangers a long time ago, so I'll definitely have to rewatch the first one before seeing this one, just to catch up on it. But um, I don't think there's a premise. I don't even think there's a poster for it yet, but I just want to follow up on The Strangers. It was a really scary, creepy movie, just unsettling, as I remembered it when I was younger, so interested to see how I feel about it as an adult and see what they mean by chapter one. Also set to release on May 24th is the Garfield movie. I did see a trailer for it, I think just on YouTube uh, about last month ago. So back in, maybe in December, I don't even know, whatever, a month ago. And it looked really cute. Again, this will probably be one that I'll take my baby to uh, a very late showing and probably not on the release of May 24th, probably later on when there's not much of a crowd and at night when there's even less of a crowd. Uh, that way she's not disturbing people. If she gets too upset, I can just leave. I'm not too invested in any little kid movies. But I do want to start introducing her to films, and I kind of need to start being a child again and actually watching little kid movies because I've been so into, like, horror and <laughs> things like that that I need to take time to actually care about the, the little kid stuff. Like, I don't think I watched any little kid movie this year, so, for 2023, because this might be coming out 2024. <laughs> so, I need to just take time to be a kid, and I think my kid is going to teach me how to be young again. Uh, not completely, but just enjoy more things like that. So, but it looks really cute. Garfield was always one of my favorites. He's hungry all the time, and I just love that. <laughs> Okay, June 14th, the movie that is set to release is Inside Out 2. I absolutely love the film Inside Out. I think the reason I saw that was because of my niece and nephew growing up. So, it, like I was saying in the Garfield um, film, I don't really watch little kid movies anymore. I'm hoping with my baby I'll start watching them a little bit more often. Um, I don't know why my niece just doesn't go to the theater all, all too often. I should push for that a little bit more as she's growing up. She's five years old, so she can definitely start enjoying movies now. So that'd be cute. I might take my niece and my baby to go see these movies. That'd be really cute. I uh, just had the idea. So, <laughs> um, but Inside Out and kind of like with the movie Imaginary I was telling you guys about, I do not... I haven't been diagnosed with it, but I know it's not normal to have several personalities within one little brain. So, Inside Out, they're just imaginary friends, I know, but the Bing Bong storyline, oh my god, that was so heartbreaking. I could start crying thinking about it, just like how Bing Bong like sacrificed himself, and I know he's just imaginary, and that's the thing, is I know these things sound crazy to people. But you really get attached to them. And it, it was sad because it also meant she had to grow up. And I think that's why I just never really understood what was going on inside my head. I thought it was just all make-believe. And it's like, okay, it's, there's a time I need to grow up. But really, it's just I need to learn how to coexist in one vessel. But it's hard to explain. And it's emotional for me. So... I'm excited to see it. On June 28th, the film that is set to release is A Quiet Place, Day One. 
I love the series of A Quiet Place. I love uh, that Emily Blunt and John Krasinski, I think is his name, um, how you pronounce it? Uh, they're husband and wife in real life, and so they play husband and wife in the films, and unfortunately, John's character passes away in the first film. So, A Quiet Place 2 was the prequel to like how it happened and everything, so this is going to be even more of a prequel of like day one. So there's not much information about it. Um, again, I don't think there's even a poster about it, but just because I love A Quiet Place, um, I don't know if it's a TV show or not because I did see there's a quiet day, a quiet day, a quiet place day one, day two, and day three. So is this a TV show or is it a movie? I don't know yet, but I'm including it in this. Um, I haven't even gone down TV shows of 2023. I probably will touch base on that at the beginning of the year. One well, I'm looking forward to TV show-wise that way. But yeah, Quiet Place, uh, day one. I'm just interested to see what's going on in it. On July 19th, the film that is set to release is Twisters, which is just a standalone sequel to the 1996 film called Twister. I love this film. I remember watching it in freaking elementary school, so it's a long time ago. 1996, I was six years old, so it's been a long time coming, so there's not much said about it, but it's just nostalgia and the continuation of the Twister franchise, which that's interesting. We're getting one, so yeah, definitely going to be seeing that. Again, it comes out July 19th. July 26th. This is probably going to be a most anticipated for most people. Um, I didn't really care. I didn't see the second one. I've only seen the first one, so I will freshen up on the rest of them. But Deadpool 3 uh, is set to release July 26th. Um, I do like Deadpool. I just think it's unfair that he gets a rated R <laughs> rating when I think um, freaking, and I know they're different programs, but um, when Suicide Squad, the first one with Jared Leto's Joker, did not get rated R when his character deserved a rated R as well. And there's a lot of other comic book characters that could do, probably perform to the best ability being rated R. And that's why Deadpool is so successful because he gets to be unhinged and not on a fucking leash. So I have an issue <laughs> in that regard, but I am excited for Deadpool 3 because cha-cha-cha. Hugh Jackman is returning as Wolverine, so with Deadpool, so that's why that's why I'm excited for it. Uh, Wolverine is recovering from his injury when he crosses paths with the loudmouth Deadpool. They team up to defeat the common a common enemy. So again, I don't really care for Deadpool himself. Um, I do think what is his name? Ryan Reynolds. I hope it's Ryan Reynolds. I think so. The other... Yeah, I hope it's Ryan Reynolds. So, put a correction if not. He's funny enough, but I don't think it's that funny, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it comes out July 26th. On September 6th, the film that is set to release is Beetlejuice 2, and it will star William Keaton as Beetlejuice again. He's reprising his role, ha <laughs> As well as it will have Winona Ryder back and Jenna Ortega. Um, I don't think there's a synopsis given yet, but it's one that's very anticipated and I'm sure it's going to do absolutely amazing. I do remember watching Beetlejuice growing up as a kid. I was freaking freaked out by it, but as I got older, I watched it every year and I slowly but surely became used to the idea of Beetlejuice and the concept and the look of Tim Burton. And I believe Tim Burton is back on this project. October 4th, the film that is set to release is Joker Fole Odu, which is the second Joker uh, starring Walking Phoenix, again rated R. It also will star Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. It is going to be so interesting to see how this, these two get along. Um, I love the idea of the Joker and Harley Quinn um, in the comic books when, even though I know it flopped, but Suicide Squad with 
Jared Leto's Joker and Margot Robbie, Robbie's Harley Quinn. I know why we shouldn't like the original Suicide Squad Harley Quinn, but I do. <laughs> I just love her. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do. Um, and I know the outfit was not approved by her and all that stuff by Margot Robbie, but I just loved it so much. Like, that is what Harley Quinn would look like. And again, they should be rated R. So this is the Joker and Harley Quinn getting a rated R, getting a rated R on. So <laughs> I'm very excited. It is going to be a musical thriller. I'm not excited to put this movie in there. I'm just mentioning it. It's not an anticipated film. It's, it's an anticipated skip film, but they are making Mean Girls into a musical. I don't know how I feel about making these into musicals. I do love musicals, but why are we like, just come up with new original ideas for musicals. Don't, I don't know. We don't need a definitely a Mean Girls musical. But do we need a Joker in a musical form? I don't think so, but interested to see what happens with this. But mostly interested to see uh, Walking Phoenix and Lady Gaga's um, chemistry. If Maxine does not come out this year, in 2024, then October 25th, is my most anticipated film, Terrifier 3. I'm so excited. If you guys have not seen the trailer, you need to check it out. And this is set around Christmas time. And I really wanted to go see the second one in theater when they re-released it. And they gave out this awesome poster of Terrifier 3 with art during Christmas time. Art the Clown, oh my gosh. I know I really shouldn't like <laughs> love these films as much as I do, but I do. Um, I'm actually terrified of clowns, but yeah, it's really funny because I actually really love it, uh, Pennywise the Clown, and now Art the Clown, and yeah, I actually take, I take, it's like my, take the things I fear the most and end up actually having a super fascination with them. So. I love eating now, and I don't love clowns, but I love Pennywise, and I love Art the Clown. So, so excited for this one. I hope we get more answers into the lore of Art the Clown. Where does he come from? How does he tie in with Sienna and her family? The dad, is he Sienna's dad? Who knows, who cares? I'm just gonna be there. I did not know we were getting a second movie of this, but on November 22nd is set to release of Gladiator 2, directed by Ridley Scott again. And so I really like the first Gladiator. I'm probably gonna rewatch it before this one, because again, I only saw the first one. When I was younger, so I'm definitely going to watch the newest one and see, or the last one before I say the newest one. Uh, it doesn't have much of a synopsis given to it, but I'm definitely excited to see Gladiator 2 that releases on November 22nd. Okay, we only have a couple more that we know some details of. Not full details, but some. Uh, December 20th, they are releasing the film Mufasa. The Lion King, um, I believe, I believe it's going to be a live action one. If it's animated, it'll be better. But, um, little, <laughs> little backstory. Very first film I ever remember going to the theaters was as a kid was the animated film, The Lion King. And I fell in love with lions at that point. My favorite animal to this day is lions. I love all animals, but I severely collected uh, stuffed animals, not stuff, stuffed toy animals of lions. And I love lions. I'm amazed I don't have a lion tattooed on me right now. I, if I can save up enough money, I will someday. But um, I just love lions ever since seeing that film. And I took my niece for her first um, theatrical experience to the live action of The Lion King. She was way too young, probably doesn't remember it, but is a big moment for me. So maybe again, I will take my little girl to go see Mufasa, The Lion King. Like how full circle is that? That alone is so freaking cute. Oh, I'm so excited just for that moment. Again, she's way too young. I was old enough to remember The Lion King during my first viewing, but Good thing you can always just replay these things for the kids. So, but it's cute for me to know that these were all their first viewings as my first viewing. So yeah, we all have that in common. Cute. Ah. On December 25th, they are going to be releasing the film Nosferatu. 
I have not seen the original. It's very old. I do need to see it, but it's basically the original vampire. And um, it's a Robert Eggers film, which I love Robert Eggers. And he, uh, last year, last, last year, in 2022, my favorite film was The Northman, which was directed by Robert Eggers and starred Alexander Skarsgård. We don't get Alexander this time, but we get a Skarsgård. If you guys don't know, I fucking love the Skarsgård family, the entirety of them. And this time, Nesperatu is going to be played by Bill Skarsgård, who plays Pennywise in the It films. Again, I just love the Skarsgård, so he's going to do absolutely amazing in it. And it's also going to have Willem Dafoe and Nicholas Holt and like just, oh my god, all those names. Renfield was really good. I think that's a 2022 film. That's why I didn't cover it. But that was a great vampire movie. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. There's not much information given on it. But just that cast, director, everything. Oh, I hope. It's highly anticipated. Please don't let me down. It sounds really amazing. So the next few are just going to be honorable mentions. They're not going to be uh, they're not the films that I am like, oh my god, I'm so excited to go see. That's what all those previous ones were. These are just the ones I know are going to be big films next year. And so it's kind of what, like, the actor Dane DeHaan, <laughs> Dane DeHaan said. Sometimes I don't just see films because I'm excited to see them. But I know they're, they're going to be talked about a lot. And if someone's like, hey, did you see that film? Yeah, I did. I have to get into the lore of the Mad Max world. But they are coming out and I don't know what day or uh, synopsis, but Mad Max Furiosa is coming out in 2024. So I kind of want to start getting into the Mad Max world. Maybe I'll enjoy it. Maybe I'll be scared of it. I don't know. Again, it's kind of like the whole end of time, like a weird time and everything. And they're in a different type of situation. I don't know anything about it. It just looks gritty to me where they are. But um, a lot of people liked the character of Furiosa in the last Mad Max film. I used to know the title of it. I'm really bad. I, I need to get into the lore of it before I see it. And then the last one is Godzilla and Kong. I know that there's Godzilla, there's King Kong, there's Godzilla versus Kong. And now they're like kind of teaming up with each other. So I need to get in the lore of them as well. But those are just some... I'm only going to see, so when people ask me if I've seen them, sure, <laughs> sure I've seen them. If I don't, I'm not going to miss out on them, but yeah. So guys, that was my most anticipated films for 2024. Uh, I know there's going to be a lot more films. This is just the last minute scramble of finding films to put this video together to hopefully post on January 1st. Um, if you know movies coming out that you're anticipating, please comment down below. Let me know. Please like, hit subscribe, hit that bell notifications because we have a lot of movies we're going to be seeing this year. And I'm excited to be watching all these films with you guys and just getting opinions and a uh, conversation started about all this. So thanks guys and I'll see you at the movies.